Hello and welcome to this very, well, what can I say, very dark live broadcast to you. Thank you so much for joining me and for tuning in as we're live right now from a very different revisited location. Now, you were probably watching, or if, if you were or weren't watching earlier today, I did say that we would revisit a location um, when it gets dark. So, for those of you who didn't watch earlier's uh, live bulletin, um, I would mentioned earlier on that I would come back to um, a location as soon as the lights have gone out, in other words, as soon as it's getting dark. <sighs> I'm just trying to compose myself, so if I come across a little bit kind of nervous, it's because I am a little bit. You could probably tell just by the light from behind me that it's actually quite foggy in here, or misty, which is kind of adding to that kind of eerie feeling. So anyway, let me, let me just compose myself. Let me just compose myself. The signal's a little bit weak as well, so we're just going to go a little bit further this way, so just bear with me one second. Okay, so hopefully that's going to be a little bit better. Okay, so earlier today, um, if you were watching and if you weren't, I did a live bulletin from a beautiful Samuel Valley Nature Reserve. And it was just a quick bulletin to let you know that I was going to be doing a live broadcast tonight in a, a tunnel. So, um, as you're probably aware, if, you, if you've watched my previous broadcasts, if you've uh, looked at my Facebook page and had a look, you'll see that I actually did um, a pre-recorded message from one of Dudley's oldest railway tunnels, going back uh, probably about a week or two weeks ago. Um, it had to be a pre-recorded message simply because I was so deep in the tunnel, in fact I was in the deepest, darkest part of the tunnel, that it was impossible to get a live broadcast signal. In fact, there was actually no telephone signal in there whatsoever. So I had to do a pre-recorded message and hopefully I captured all the best parts and kind of made it together and put it on Facebook for you. The next day I did uh, another um, video message from Netherton Tunnel. And very, very quickly, Netherton Tunnel is an extremely long tunnel uh, just off the Birmingham Canal, just literally just outside Dudley. In fact, the Netherton Canal Tunnel goes under Dudley itself. It's a staggering 1.75 miles long. It takes about an hour and 20 minutes to walk through. And whether you walk through there at day or night, it's incredibly dark. However, I managed to do um, a pre-recorded message in there at night time, about half past nine at night. And needless to say, I managed to stick it for about 45 minutes. Um, it was an interesting experience, uh, completely different from Dudley Tunnel altogether. Um, and so, I thought it, it would be different to come back to another tunnel. So, I've actually come back to Coesley Tunnel, so I'm welcoming you back to Coesley Tunnel. Now, Coesley Tunnel is the shortest of the tunnels, it's only 360 yards long. However, when it's dark, it seems even longer. Now, Coesley Tunnel is neither abandoned nor derelict. Now, Dudley Tunnel is abandoned and derelict and has been for a long time. It's, it's really old, I can't remember how old it is, but it's an absolutely fascinating, without question, the most fascinating place I have ever been to, ever. There's just an eeriness about that place, but it's absolutely fascinating. A Netherton Tunnel is neither abandoned nor derelict. In fact, it's used every single day, but that has its own fascinating kind of atmosphere. And when you go in there at night time, it creates a whole new experience, a whole new kind of feeling to the place. And so I thought it would be an idea. I thought it would be a good idea mm. to come back to Coesley Tunnel. Coesley Tunnel, again, is neither abandoned nor derelict. In fact, it's used every single day. In fact, as many as 12 boats pass through Coesley Tunnel on any given day. Um, but I thought it would be a good idea to come back to Coastal Tunnel when it gets dark. And it is actually getting really dark really quickly. And I thought it would be interesting for you guys as well as for me, not only to come back to this tunnel, because I've already done a, a, a broadcast from this tunnel a good couple of weeks ago. In fact, it's probably the second or third place that I broadcast from. I thought it would be quite different to come back here at night time. Now, literally about 45 minutes ago, there was a 
really big heavy rain shower. It was absolutely pouring down the rain. There was flashes of lightning, it was thundering, and now that's cleared away. But because it's been so hot and so humid and the air's been so thick and soupy, so to speak, really still and muggy, what it's actually done, not only is it getting dark outside and it is literally almost pitch black outside, but it's actually created this eerie mist, this kind of misty fog. You might just be able to capture some of that. If I just kind of, can you see that beam there? That's coming from my torch. Now I'm having to use the torch because that's the only way you're going to see me. I'm just inside the north end of Coesley Tunnel. I can't go any further because the signal would literally cut off and I wouldn't be able to do a live broadcast at all. So I'm just inside the entrance. However, it's getting dark and I can only just see the tops of the trees. Now normally you'd be able to see the under the tunnel and I cannot see anything. But there's this really eerie, misty fog in this tunnel because of the difference in temperature, I suppose. So you've got warm and kind of muggy outside and it's created this, because it's a lot cooler in here, it's created this kind of mist and you can really see it. And I can, I can see it, it's like little particles of I can literally see it's really foggy and misty in here so I've got to be really careful. Luckily, um, Posty Tunnel has got a stable floor, so it's like cobbled. It's a little bit unsteady, a little bit uneven, but it, it's not too bad. And I've got a railing behind me as well. I'm literally crouched down a little bit because I'm, I'm literally broadcasting from my brand new tripod and unfortunately it's not as tall as the other one, so I'm having to stoop a little bit. But it's just a fascinating place to be, but I thought I'd come in here at night time. So that's where we am. So I'm going to try and hack it and stick it in here for as long as I can. And I just hope and pray that I don't hear any noises or see anything. Because it's bad enough coming here at night time. And Coesley Tunnel is probably the most notorious, most well-known tunnel on the Birmingham Canal, which joins um, West Bromwich to the south and Wolverhampton to the north. And like I said, it's used every single day. So it's not abandoned or derelict, but it's steeped in history, absolutely steeped in history. Just a very, very quickly recap. So 360 yards long, it's over, well over 100 years old. And um, back in, uh, quite recently actually, back in 2000, I think it was 2013, there was actually a huge mudslide at the other end. So if you go down to the southern end of the tunnel, so that's the West Brom end of the tunnel, you will, um, there's actually, they've actually placed wire mesh over both sides of the embankment because there was a massive mudslide and it, there was so much that, that slid down the banks that it cut off the pathways altogether and so they had to get special pontoon boats with kind of like scoops or diggers on them to kind of scoop all the tons and tons of um, trees and mud and material into hoppers and then they were carried up to skips and then emptied. So, um, so that was like in 2013. I'm probably standing, probably the most, I don't know about the fascinating part, but roughly where I'm standing right now, back in 1904, so we're talking over 100 years ago, near enough pretty much this very spot, this tunnel witnessed a terrible, terrible incident. Now, that's not why I've come back to Coastal Tunnel. As I mentioned earlier, the reason why I've come back here is simply because I wanted to bring you in here at night time so you could really get a feel and a see of what it's like in here at night. Now, this is the second time I've done a night time broadcast. In fact, this is the first time I've done a broadcast live, but the second time I've done something like this at night time. And it really is a completely different cut of fish altogether. I really don't want to start hearing things. Okay. So, I'm just trying to compose myself. It's bad enough it being dark and night time, and then you've got this foggy mist, like something out of a movie, just, just literally surrounding me. I can feel it on my skin. You wouldn't think it. You probably can't. So I don't know if you can. You might just get it. See it? I can literally feel that fog all around me, touching my skin. It's that thick and heavy in here. Um, but back in 1904, um, a lady named Hannah Cox 
brought her two children down here. The youngest was only four or five months old, and the oldest daughter was two years old, and she drowned them both right here in this tunnel. She actually used her apron strings. Now, stories and reports that I've, I've read, and you can, you can Google it yourself um, about the incident. Um, apparently, the mother was uh, tormented by debt, uh, but also she was kind of mentally unstable, and unfortunately she tied her two daughters together using apron strings and drowned them right here, right properly where I'm standing. So as you can tell, this tunnel is steeped in history, and there's a lot of memories and a lot of, I don't know, there's just lots of things attached to this tunnel. Um, I think mosquitoes tend to like me because I'm literally being attacked by mosquitoes. Anyway, sorry. So, so there's, a, so there's a lot of history attached to this tunnel. But I just thought it would be really fascinating for both me and you to come down here at night time. Just wondering if you can see my breath, but it's actually the mist. I've never seen anything like it, and it's just making things just so much more intense. You wouldn't think it, but it really is making this experience really intense. It's really thick fog, like mist, but it's like it's literally just the temperature difference between outside and in here. So there we go. So that's pretty much all I can tell you about the tunnel. Like I said, if you're going to, um, you can either Google it yourself, or by all means go on to Google and Google Coesley Tunnel, or you can go onto my website, as I mentioned every time, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> every time, so if you go onto my website, um, www.camdronephotography.co.uk click on portfolio and then click on influences of times and under there will be closely tunnels so there'll be lots of photographs that I took outside and inside when I did a, a live broadcast weeks and weeks ago and on there will be all the information about the things that have happened here and, and just a little bit of interest about Coastal Tunnel for those of you who are watching for the first time, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for watching. It's a pleasure to have your company. Uh, in fact, the more people that watch, the better, because I actually feel rather quite, in, not intimidated, but just quite lonely in here. I can hear my voice echoing, and there's this just mist all around me. I, I can literally look over my shoulder, and all I can see is mist. It really is like being in some kind of movie, scary movie. I had no idea it was going to be like this down here tonight. Of all the nights to pick, I chose tonight. There you go. So, how's about we have a bit of a look about now? I'm hoping, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see something if I do this. Oh, so if I just come back around the back of the camera, can you, let me just see if you can see. Aha. I'm just trying to get my bearings. If I go that way. Can you see that mist? Literally all around. I just pan it that way. So there's just trying to get my bearing, sorry folks, just bear with me. So there's the floor. You can see the railing and the canal. Believe it or not, is there. See the canal? That's the canal. That's the other side over there. If I pan the camera up, you can see what it's like in here. But can you see what I mean about that fog? So that's just behind me. If I spin this way, you can just make out the entrance. So that's the entrance there. So you can just see the tops of the trees. But can you see that fog? So it's looking back across the other side. And then that's looking, believe it or not, that's looking towards the other end. And all I can see is fog. I can give you an idea. Of what it's like. You can hear all the drips of water that's coming from just over there. 
There's lots of moths hanging down from the ceiling. So all that water's dripping down from above. And we're literally underneath Coesley itself. But there you go. That's what it's like in here. So if I just put you back down on the floor. Oop. Right. Got the bearings. Oh, there you go. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pan this way. So there we go. That's better. So now you can see. Now I'll just pan it that way. Oops, sorry. So now you can get an idea of what it's like and how foggy and misty it is in here. So I'll just turn you a little bit so you can get an idea. Of so you've got actually this rail in here and you've got the one over the other side. So, ah, there you go, so you can see me a bit better now. So if I just pan that, I'm going to do, is do that. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't really want to see anything behind me and I feel a bit better if I've got some kind of light. I just hope that I don't see anything or hear anything. Now that water is really loud, you can probably tell that it's really loud anyway. That water runs all the time, so it's literally running, it's fresh water running from Coesley above us. Um, I think Coesley, I think it's about 435 metres above us, so there's literally a whole village or town above us, and this tunnel runs up right underneath it. So that water's quite loud, so I'm quite happy with that, because obviously I know what it is. But if I hear anything else other than that water, I'm going to look and I'm going to be a bit freaked, to say the least. And if I see anything, it's going to be even worse. Because in order to walk through this tunnel, you'd have to have some light. There's no way. I mean, I managed to walk through this tunnel earlier on without a light, just about. But I literally had to walk. I say walk, I had to shuffle. Because you can't see your feet, I literally had to shuffle through the tunnel on my feet just to make sure I didn't fall or trip. I said, it's not too bad and it is cobbly, but you can easily sort of get your feet caught or something. So I literally shuffled through here. So it took me twice as long to walk through. But there's no way you could walk through this tunnel in the dark. So if I hear any voices or anything, I think you get my drift. I'm going to be panicky. I just don't want to see anything, especially with this mist. You wouldn't think mist would just, I don't know. You wouldn't think it would not put you on edge, but it's just so eerie. I mean, I was here, like I said, weeks and weeks ago, and it was just absolutely fine. But this mist just makes it even more eerie. Interesting and fascinating, definitely, but even more eerie because it's so thick. Like so I can feel it touching me, I can feel it touching my skin, I can feel it on my face, I can feel it on my throat. It's really catchy. But I can't believe the other end is up there somewhere. Absolutely mad. But I'm going to stick in here as long as I can. So what I'm going to do, if I can, Now I'm in complete darkness, apart from the light coming from the screen. And I am literally looking behind me, because I don't want to see anything. Literally, if I look behind me, I can't see anything, I can't see the fog, I can't see anything. It's like having, it's almost like having, it's almost like having darkness that completely envelopes you so if you can imagine being somewhere so dark that the only light you've got is from a mobile phone the darkness envelopes everything around it so if you turn everything off 
I've got my hand behind my back and I can't even see it. That's even with the mobile phone on, I can't see any. If I move out of the way, that's how dark it is in here. Nothing. So you can literally see my t-shirt and then nothing. So if anything, anything was to touch my fingers or my hand then, I would have probably screamed pretty loud. I probably would have broken my phone as well. And deafened you guys. But I'm constantly, even though I'm looking at you, I am consciously looking behind me. It just puts you on edge. And like I've mentioned before, we take light for granted because we're surrounded by light all the time. Even at night time, we might have a night light or, or a lamp or um, street lights. Or even when you turn the light off in the bedroom, you still have that kind of dimmed light, so to speak. But when you have every source of light taken away from you and you are put in absolute complete darkness, it's a whole different experience and it's amazing what it does. And I've mentioned before that it heightens and kind of acutes your senses so your sense of touch becomes very heightened. So you're all consciously aware of your physical being and how everything feels on you, like your clothes and like the, 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 the fog on my skin and everything. But if you feel anything else, I mean, obviously everyone knows what a, a gnat or a mosquito or something. So if I feel something on my skin and it feels like an insect, that's fine. But anything that you can't describe, you, you just, you want to know what it is. But it's not just about your sense of touch. It's also your sense of hearing and your sense of... Your sense of hearing. and your sense of sight. So your hearing becomes very acute because you very quickly pick out what you can tell. So you very quickly pick out... I don't know if you can hear that, it's a fox or a badger in the distance. Um, but there was something that, that way. Oh, I can't even look. I can't even look. I'm just going to keep looking at you. Um, so your sense of sight and hearing becomes very acute. So you very quickly pick up what you can hear. So I can hear the water, I can hear... What's that noise? <sighs> okay, just gonna carry on. So you can, I can hear the, the occasional bit of traffic really distant, I can hear that badger or fox or whatever it is, I can hear the water. I hear it. But if I hear anything else, a voice, um, anything, footsteps, anything, I am going to seriously look because I'm going to want to know what it is and where it's coming from. And then your sense of sight becomes very acute. So even though you can't actually physically see anything, you're just looking for anything. So you tend to look in the darkness, even though you can't actually see anything. You're just looking all the time. I am constantly looking behind me. It's a very strange feeling. But can you imagine what it would be like if you were here and you could tell somebody was watching you, but you couldn't see them? Can you imagine what that would be like? So say, say, let's say right now, me doing this, and I could tell I was being watched by something or someone. But no matter how much I looked, no matter how much I put the torch on, there was nothing there. That's a pretty awkward feeling to have. But I just wanted to bring you in here, deliberately at night time, to give you an idea of what it's like. And hopefully you find, you're finding this interesting. I certainly am. Even though I feel a little bit apprehensive, I don't feel too bad. My heart's not pounding yet. But I do feel a little bit apprehensive. I feel quite lonely. I feel very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Exposed, in a way. Because I'm exposed to the dark. And I wouldn't say it's not a nice feeling to have, but you're just consciously aware that it's there all the time. I mean, obviously you can see it's there, but you're just constantly aware it's there. It's, it's literally just there. I've only got to turn and it's there. If I look behind me, it's there. It's literally surrounding you. So the minute you turn the light off, it closes in on you, if you see what I mean. But it's a fascinating experience. Believe it or not. <laughs> if 
think I'm going to put the torch back. I'm going to put the torch back on because I can hear something in here. It's not water, it's something else. It's not coming from outside, it's that way. Oh. Shit. Sorry, I didn't mean to swear, I didn't mean to swear, sorry. Oh, there's people coming. Okay, we'll let these people pass. Just bear with me. turn the light off because I don't want to blind them. Well, at least I don't feel so bad now because I'm not the only crazy person walking through a tunnel at night time. Or should I say in a tunnel at night time. <sighs> I'm really sorry, I did not mean to swear. But I, I just heard a voice and I couldn't see them until they come around the corner. <sighs> okay. Okay, we'll leave the light off for a bit because they're walking up and I just don't want to blind them. They're actually walking through here with no light. They must be absolutely crazy. They've got no light. But maybe just... My heart's pounding. And it was funny because I only just mentioned about hearing and seeing and stuff like that and I literally just heard a voice. Like a mumble. And when you're in a tunnel, because sound echoes, you don't know where it's coming from. And because I couldn't see them, I didn't know if it's there or behind me. That's why I put my torch on really quick. Okay. I'm okay. I'm fine. I think. Okay. Okay, so I don't know how long I've been on live for, but I would say probably about 20 minutes. I'm going to stick it in here for about half hour, 45 minutes if I can, because I really do want to get an idea of what it's like in here, and I really want to stick it in here for as long as I can. Oh. can't believe they're walking through in the dark. I cannot believe, imagine there's two people. It's just not too bad, but even so. I don't know about that fog. Remember I said about that fog? It's nearly gone. It's literally nearly gone. Just bear with me one sec. Yeah, it's practically gone, just like that. Literally, instantly, I didn't even know it had gone. But that fog has literally almost completely gone. Which kind of makes it slightly better. However, it now means that I can see everything. At least with the fog, you couldn't see anything or everything. But now the fog's gone, it means that we can now see everything, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay. I'm literally, I'm literally having to, like, stoop in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, dear. I must be crazy doing this. I think they're almost out of the tunnel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, put the torch back on and we'll have another look around because you might be able to see a bit more because the fog's gone or the, the mist. I'll just give it another minute or two and then we'll put the light back, the torch on. You can have another look around and just see. But please forgive me if it's not kind of... I'm just trying to get adjusting to like putting the torch to where you can see and sometimes because doing a live broadcast it's kind of backwards. It's very difficult to remember which side is which. So um, you'll have to excuse me if... You'll have to excuse me if... Um, if it's a bit kind of all over the place, but I'll do my best. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the torch, put the torch back on. 
And uh, can you see now that mist? It's not quite as bad. It's kind of lifted a bit. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to come to the side and let you have another look, just to get an idea. So I'm going to pick the tripod up, and hopefully I can get it just right. So if I pick the cam to the torch, so it's still a little bit misty, but not as bad. But you can see how far the railing goes. You can probably hear my voice echoing. But now you can see. So there's the other railing all the way down there. Can you just see it on the other side? It comes up. You see it's really wet that side. You can see there's lots of dripping water. So there's like literally that wall. In fact, I don't know if you can see it, but that wall is literally covered in moss. <laughs> so literally a thick from about there all the way down to the floor is like moss. Thick moss, like a thick blanket, so it's really wet there. And if I pan it round and go just there, there's literally loads of water coming down from the ceiling from up there. So you can see outside. And so there's, there's the canal, literally there. See that? Lots of bits floating. Ooh. I think that was a bat. Oh, there's a bat. Yeah, you can see. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk a little bit further in the tunnel. I'm not going to go too much further because I don't want the signal to cut out. But we'll go a little bit further and then we'll stop. I'm just going to go here. I don't want, I don't want the signal to cut off. And I'm going to pick the camera up this way. If I pan it, whoop. there you go. See a bit better. Okay, let's come back around this way and do it a bit more. It just turns off. It's a little bit messy, but it's definitely not as bad as it was. I don't know what I would do if I suddenly saw something just up there. I'd freak. Literally freak and I'd scream if I just saw something. Like, I think you get the drift, don't you? So if I saw something. But it is a fascinating place, it really is. Okay, what we're going to do, because it's saying the signal's weak, I don't want to lose signal altogether, so we're just going to go back this way a bit. Just walking backwards. Let's go back this way a bit, and hopefully it won't be so bad. We'll go down here, look, because that's where my that's where my case is. There you go.
literally sitting, we're well not sitting, but kind of squatting on the floor. And I've got my finger on the bottom of the torch at the ready, just in case. <laughs> Flash of light, a bit of a disco, can't we? Mm. See what I mean? Go up a bit. Mm, that's better. I like to see what's behind me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's still quite. It's not as foggy as it was, but it's still a little bit foggy. You can see the fog. You can see the railing, the other side, the other towpath, the other path that you can walk through the whole tunnel. Over there. And then that's the canal. Kind of there. And then that's behind me. Let's just turn this off. I don't want to run the battery out. Because then when I really need it, it wouldn't work. Okay, let's just stay here like this. So if I say absolutely nothing, and if I move out the way, see how quiet it is. And you can tell that if I actually go backwards, how quickly you disappear into darkness. And I'm literally only about three feet away from the camera. That's how quickly you get taken in by the dark. And I'm literally here. You know what I mean? Now, can you imagine if I was sitting here and something like that happened behind me? I would absolutely, without question, toilet myself. It's the most polite way of saying it. I would really toilet myself. And if that happens, I've got to go home on the train like that because I haven't brought any spare underwear or anything with me. So I'd have to go home stinky and smelly. It's only so long I like, it's only so long that I can handle having that darkness behind me before I've got to check. I've just got to look, see. Hopefully you found this interesting. I know it hasn't quite perhaps been as clear or as kind of maybe as good as the other ones, but I really did think that it would be interesting to, that it would really be interesting to come back to close the tunnel at night time. And I'm really glad I did. Really, really glad I did. But this has got a whole different feeling than the other locations. I just wish you could experience that with me. I wish, it's all very well you're watching, but I just wish that you could be in these locations with me. I wish you could get that feel factor. Because I know when you watch something, it's not quite the same, even though it might be good or not good or interesting or not. I just wish that you could share. I wish I could share that feel factor with you. And if I could pick one place 
if I could choose one location out of every single location I've been to, if there's one location that is top of the list for the feel factor, it would be Dudley, tu Dudley Tunnel, without question, hands down, without fail, definitely. I don't know why, there is just something about that location. It's not scary, there's nothing particularly scary about the location, there's nothing like that, it's just... I don't know, it's, it's, I mean, it's dark in here, and it was dark in Everton Tunnel, but there is just something about Dudley Tunnel that is just not a patch on any other location I've been to. And I just wish I could share that with you. I wish I could take you in there and let you spend 10 minutes, half an hour, however long you could handle it for, in there. There's just an eerie silence. Um... I mean, it's dark, don't get me wrong, it's absolutely pitch black in there. But there's just, I can't put my finger on it, there's just something about that tunnel. And I just, I don't know, it, it's without question, I don't know, I've said this lots of times, uh, and you'll have to forgive me if I keep repeating myself, but it is without question the most fascinating place I've ever been. I would go back there again, definitely would go back there and again. I don't think I'd go in there on my own, I'd love to take somebody with me. So if any of you are up for coming in there with me, I would absolutely definitely take you in there for half an hour and we'll do one of these. Maybe not a live broadcast, but we'll do a pre-recorded message and we'll switch all the lights off and you can just stand with me in there for as long as you can handle it for in absolute darkness. I definitely wouldn't go down there at night time, not even with somebody. No, no way. Not after that half an hour I spent in there. Uh-uh, forget it. It would, not even if you offered me money. No, I wouldn't do it. I have to be honest, I would not go in there down at night time. It's a bit tricky anyway, because you've got the gravel and stuff on the floor, but I wouldn't do it. Not at night time. No way, it's dark enough as it is, and it's eerie enough anyway. But then Netherton Tunnel is completely different. It's got its own different atmosphere, feel factor. It's not, again, it's not scary. It's not really eerie. But to go down there at night time is something else. And this, I don't know. Again, this has got its own atmosphere. And it's not until I start talking about it that I can start picking up on it. And up until now, I've not really thought about it or kind of felt it. But now that I'm talking about it with you, this has got its own atmosphere. In a kind of way, it's a comforting thing to hear that water because it's so loud and it's just over there. That's actually quite comforting. But I'm consciously aware of what's behind me. And it's making me feel quite edgy and apprehensive. And it's not nervous, just apprehensive. And the worst thing that could happen right now is for a fish to decide to jump in the water right next to me, which they do sometimes, without warning. And if that happens right now, or in the next minute or two, I'm gonna, I don't know, I'll try not to say anything I shouldn't. It would make me jump, because I can't even see the canal. In fact, I can only just see the railing. So if anything jumps in that water, which they do, I'm gonna flipping freak. Because I did that the last time I did a broadcast. And it made me panic for a few minutes, for like a few moments. Something as simple as that. And you do overreact to things when things happen in the dark. Things that you wouldn't normally overreact to in the daylight, you, because you're so acute in your senses, you tend to overreact to things that are completely explainable or explainable at night time because you can't see it. But I cannot imagine, and I've said this before, I can't imagine doing something like this and seeing or hearing something I cannot explain. That's a completely different ball game. And the only time that's happened was in Dudley Tunnel. And if you've watched that pre-recorded message, you'll know what I mean. If you haven't, please have a look and see what you think. You can't really see anything, but I... I am pretty sure I saw something. And it was enough to panic me for a few moments. So. And, and I've said this before, everything you see and hear, even if it's a pre-recorded message like Netherton Tunnel and Dudley Tunnel, everything you see and hear is absolutely live. 
So it may not be live like now, but I don't use any sound effects, I don't use any, I don't tamper with anything, everything's raw footage. It's just a tripod, my mobile phone, and a torch, and me. I don't have anybody with me, nobody's operating anything. So if anything happens, or if I see anything, or if I react to something, it is absolutely that question, genuine. I don't rehearse anything, I don't, I don't act how to, to look shocked. So everything you see in here, in all my uh, live broadcasts or pre-recorded messages are as it happened. And yeah, it, it, whatever, whatever I thought I saw, was enough to, to startle me and actually throw me off. And if you watch it, you can tell by the way that I look, but also by the way I try and talk. In other words, I try to mind over matter the situation by continuing to talk because I'm aware of being, I'm being recorded. So I try and compose myself, but you can tell by the way I'm talking that I'm panicky and my, my senses are heightened and that I'm trying to blot out what I think I, I've seen and just carry on talking. But yeah, so that's the only place that I can honestly say that I think I've seen something that I can't explain. I can describe it to you. I can tell you what it looked like. Um, and I know I said it was kind of out of the corner of my eye, but I kind of looked over that way and saw the little blicks of light coming from the camera. So my eyes were just, and then I looked and it was there, just behind the camera. But only for a few seconds, just long enough for me to get a quick glimpse and then it just moved away. And I'm not somebody who makes things up like that. I've never in my life ever seen, I've never been anywhere that's, first of all, made me feel like I needed to go back. And then having gone back, something like that happens. That's the first in 40 years that has ever happened. So I just wish I could let you feel that. I wish I could give you that experience. But hopefully you're sharing it with me. And... This won't be the last night's time live broadcast I'll do. I'll do more. If I can think of places to go, safe places to go, I'll do more. But who knows? Anyway, I'm conscious of the fact that I've probably been blabbing, probably bored you to death. I'm really hoping you found this interesting. Um, I want to stay in here just for a couple more minutes with you and then we'll finish. Because I've probably been going on for 45 minutes now and you'll probably just <sighs> yawn. But anyway, a couple of minutes, and then we'll, we'll, we'll finish. And in all that time, I haven't once looked behind me, and now I'm going to... Oh, that fog's cleared a bit more, look. Can you still see it on the, um, the lens of the torch? It looks like smoke. But that is the fog, or mist. In fact, it looks like the torch is on fire. It's not, trust me. And that's not my breath. Because it's going that way. But can you see it? It literally looks like smoke. I'm just consciously looking up there because I just don't know. And what would be worse is if I turn, turned torch that way and I saw something over there like there standing there <laughs> that would not be funny be interesting but not funny let's have a look should we have a look should we have a little bit more of a look I mean you've practically seen it anyway but let's just have another look I'll give my feet because mine oh, let's just stand up a little bit let's just pan the camera up That's better. Now you can see. Should we put it on? I tell you what I'm do. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put it on full beam, so you can really get an idea. If I just pan, or if I just move the torch, hopefully you can see that. This is lots of drippy water. In fact, that side over there is probably a lot wetter than this side. This is the safer side. 
yeah, literally just disappears into nothing. So even in broad daylight, you can see the other end. But because it's completely dark, and because of the fog and the mist, it's, it's, it's just blackness. Literally just disappears into nothing. Is just turn the tripod just a little bit more this way. That's it. And if I just pan just up a little bit more. There we go. That's better. Give it a bit more of a look. Let's see. There's lots of water dripping just down there, I can see it. So let's just pan the camera down a bit more. See my hand. Just there. And how quickly it disappears into darkness. If I come down this way, you just see it. So, there you go. Hopefully you found this interesting or fascinating. I'm really hoping so. Um, I'm sorry if this has gone on a little bit longer than maybe you, you anticipated, but I'm hoping that you found it interesting. I can see lots of people watching. Uh, some people are watching for the first time, so thank you so much. Um, it's always an absolute pleasure and a privilege to bring you these live broadcasts where I can. Um, and I just feel so humbled, so, so humbled to be able to go to all these different locations and take you in there and broadcast from them and not only show you live pictures and photographs of these fascinating places but even to do things like this even places that aren't abandoned or derelict to come down here to do something that you wouldn't normally do to come down here at night time and broadcast and, and show you what it's like in here at night time and just give a bit of a, a look around and, and just give a little bit of information and just kind of talk to you about what it feels like and that's kind of why I go into you know that's why I tend to talk a lot about how I'm feeling and what I can feel because I'm trying to to give you as much information as I can it's all very well me describing it's dark it's you know I can't see anything but if I can describe to you how it feels in other words what, what that fog felt like on my skin if I can give you as much information as I can then it might make it a little bit more interesting for you. Maybe you can get an idea, even though you're not here, and as much as I'd love you all to be here with me, but the more information I can give you, the more you can kind of relate to what it's like here. So I'm hoping you found it interesting. I could stay here with you guys for so much longer, but I know I've probably it's a broadcast for long enough, and there's not really much else I can show you apart from what you've already seen. Um, we could just go on and on and on, just being in complete darkness and I could just keep shining the torch around but you've basically seen what it's like down here when the lights go out and uh, when the sun goes down and when it's completely dark so I'm going to finish there like I said thank you so much for taking the time to, to, to watch me thank you so much I appreciate it I know a lot of you have got your own things to do and stuff but thank you for for watching me and for sharing this experience with me. Like I said, hopefully, hopefully you found it interesting. And um, 
just just keep watching just stay tuned keep watching hopefully on saturday i'm hoping fingers crossed hopefully saturday i will be able to do another live broadcast but it won't be at night time thankfully it will be somewhere else and i'm hoping i've done a lot of research i've done a lot of googling i'm hoping that that location is going to still be there because obviously it's very difficult sometimes to um, to actually know whether that location is still there whether it's been demolished or not but i'm hoping it's still there if i can i will so this saturday come in i'll be broadcasting from that location if for any reason there isn't a live broadcast it obviously means that that location is either uh, been demolished or it's under a different ownership or whatever the case may be but hopefully i'll be able to do a broadcast from this place if i can it will be another absolutely fascinating place to broadcast from i've done some research done some reading about it there's some really interesting facts and some interesting stories behind this place so stay tuned keep watching um hopefully i'll see you saturday uh if i do fantastic if not i will see you very very soon i've got a whole load of places literally lists and lists of places all over the united kingdom that i'm going to be broadcasting from not only broadcasting from but also taking lots of photographs as well so you'll be able to see inside and outside these places as well as all the fascinating stories and the, the, the history behind all these wonderful amazing places that are sometimes right on our doorstep but you just don't know about it as always if you know of any places near you if you can think of anywhere it could be a castle it could be ruins it could be any location which you think may be of interest that you would like to see me broadcast from somewhere where I can not only broadcast from but take photographs and also go into some depth and do some research find out about the place please please tell me uh, either um, send me a text message or go on my Facebook page or even uh, send comments while I'm doing a broadcast if you can think of anywhere at all it doesn't matter where you live you can think of anywhere let me know because if I can if I can broadcast from that location and, and go to somewhere near you I will do my very very best to be there and it would be fantastic to have your feedback so Thank you for watching, thank you for being patient with me and um, it's been an absolute joy and a pleasure to have your company as Influences of Times continues to broadcast from these amazing, fascinating locations throughout the United Kingdom. These diminishing, derelict, forgotten faces of history and the job is for me is to not only bring you there but to bring you a step closer and close that time between you now and then. So until the next time, take care. God bless, and I'll see you very soon. Thank you.